What is going on everybody? Welcome back to Malik's Water Garden. In today's video, we're going to be looking at one of the most underrated fish in the hobby, which is the Picoltia vitata, which is the L015 Candy Striped Placo. These guys are quite beautiful, quite stunning fish, and quite underrated. I actually have a group of eight in here. They are quite expensive for a Picoltia, and uh, the in terms of coloration, they are quite stunning, but you have to really give them their time to get comfortable in your tank. Otherwise, they will not look as spectacular as they can. So uh, mine are quite beautiful. I will put some B-roll footage so you guys can check that out. And uh, if you haven't watched my other Playco videos, I have quite a bit of Playco videos in the channel. So please, I highly recommend going and checking those out. And uh, check out my Playco playlist. Ding. And uh, also go and check out my other videos on the channel. And uh, if you are new here, subscribe down below and hit the notification icon so you get updated when new videos like this as well as many other related content gets uploaded. Thank you so much for your support. Let's get into this video. What's going on everybody? Welcome back to Malik's Water Garden. In today's video, we're gonna be looking at one of the most underrated Placos in the hobby, which is the L015 Picoltia Vitata, also known as the Candy Stripe Placo or the Zingu Placo. Now, the Zingu Picoltia or the Candy Stripe Placo which is the scientific name is a Pecoltia vitata. Often it gets mislabeled as a Panac macus. Now it's quite easy to tell them apart, whereas the Panac has a Panac body and head shape. These guys have a classic Pecoltia body shape. So if you were to search Pecoltia on Google, this is the type of fish that would show up. So it's a classical Pecoltia. Uh, it's a high bodied fish with a robust head and a robust body. And uh, the markings are quite unique and uh, quite uh, unilateral across all the, the fish. So it's quite easy to tell them apart from other Pecoltia as well because they do not have any spots. They only have the stripes. But aside from that, uh, the stripes do vary quite a bit from one fish to the other. So like there could be two or three fish in the same group that look a little bit different in terms of stripes. But they would not have any spots or anything like that on the head or the body. And so that's one of the ways, ways of telling them from, for example, the L397s, uh, 387s, uh, because the 387, which is also a Picoltia, has uh, a spotted head, whereas these guys don't. So uh, these are things that, uh, that we can look in more detail in upcoming videos. So comment below and let me know if you want me to make more videos about that. But for the purpose of this video, this is going to be more general care and maintenance video. But a, a breeding video about these guys is going to come out soon as well, as soon as I get them to spawn. So subscribe down below and hit that notification icon so you get up there when that video as well as many other videos gets uploaded. So for the purpose of this video, we're going to be looking at general care and maintenance. The Picoltia vitata is a larger, hypancestrous looking fish. It's a Picoltia species. Uh, it is basically a good example of what a Picoltia looks like. Now the clade Picoltia, like all of the fish that the Hypancestrus, the, the Panax, and the Picoltias all belong to this one family grouping or the subfamily called uh, the Picoltia clade. Now that whole section of fish all have similar uh, characteristics and these guys are a really good example of what those are. And uh, to, the, to that end, they are quite good at uh, everything that we talk about in terms of uh, Hypancestrus and Picoltias. Uh, they are uh, high opportunistic omnivore. They like to eat quite a bit of meat. So you want to feed them a little bit meaty food with uh, some greens as well. So I feed them high quality greens like kelp wafers. Uh, so North Fin kelp wafers is really good for these guys. They just actually ate it. They love it. I feed them spirulina. I feed them Sarah Bell's chips. I feed them um, angelfins.ca catfish chips as well as all the other foods that I feed my high ancestors. So all your Ebo foods, Dr. Bacillaires, so North uh, North Fin Bug Bites, uh, Nutrifin Bug Bites, uh, Nutrifin Bug Bites Placo Formula, the Color Enhancing Formula, Tetratropical Color Granules, all of that stuff. They readily accept all those foods and they really enjoy that stuff. So you can feed them a variety of stuff and uh, try to give them a variety of different foods. Don't just stick to one type of food and uh, that should help with uh, any issues like bloat or indigestion or anything like that. Now these guys seem to like the temperature a little bit on the cooler side. It does state that uh, the temperature range for these guys is 72 degrees Fahrenheit to 78.8 degrees Fahrenheit. They are collected in the Rio Singu, so uh, it is a little odd to see that, but I do, I do believe that that's probably the normal temperature range for a lot of our fish. 
Now, uh, having said that, I do keep mine right now at about 81 degrees Fahrenheit or a little bit below that. And in the winter, if this tank does get to about 76 degrees Fahrenheit, they, they do seem to do really well in those temperatures. And for the purpose of aquarium care, I would say keep them between 75 degrees Fahrenheit and 80 degrees Fahrenheit. You wouldn't want to give push the temperature above 80 degrees Fahrenheit and you wouldn't want to push the temperature below 75 degrees Fahrenheit long term. Now, having said that, they can tolerate a little bit cooler or a little bit warmer. I mean, my tank, it is actually 81 degrees Fahrenheit right now, a little bit lower, and they are doing quite well. And uh, they have been in that temperature all summer long. And that's also mostly because the power head in here is qu producing quite a bit of uh, heat, but uh, it's okay because uh, they are doing well. And I do need the power head in there for my other fish like the Ryan Lord Carrier that I have in here. Now, having said that, uh, they can tolerate a wide variety of pHs. It does state on planetcatfish.ca to keep them between 5.5 and 7 pH. These guys right now are at about 7.4 pH, and that might be a reason why there hasn't been any spawning, although I believe that's not probably the reason. My main focus right now is to, my main reasoning for them not having spawned yet is one, they haven't been in my care for long enough. I've only had these guys for about six months. And two, uh, they are also a little bit in on the warmer side, so the tank temperature is a little bit too warm for them to spawn. So I'm thinking of moving them to the tank beside it, which is about a degree colder right now, and it does drop to about 76 to 75 degrees Fahrenheit in the winter, or if I, if I want to, I can actually bring it down to 75 degrees Fahrenheit by removing the power head. Now, by doing that, I can actually simulate some type of a colder uh, season for them. So maybe in between those seasonal changes, they might actually do some spawning activity. Since they are wild caught fish, these things do really matter for them. So uh, I do have to play with it a little bit, but I don't see them see them being too much of an issue for me because they have been spawning captivity. There are some spawning reports on Planet Catfish, so I am going to read some of those guys. Uh, reports and stuff like that and uh, I mean I think they will spawn for me within this year so subscribe down below and hit that notification because I will be making an update video and they do spawn and I will be making a detailed spawning video on them as well having said that uh, for food wise they are opportunistic omnivore they do eat a variety of food I feed them a wide variety of food and uh, I think I mentioned all of them earlier uh, if you haven't watched my food feeding videos I highly recommend watching those because it's basically uh, focuses on this type of fish and uh, basically talks about how to feed these and what to feed and how often to feed them and all that good jazz. Now having said that, meaty food seems to be high in demand for these guys. They really like uh, their meaty food. And uh, aside from that, there's not much more I can add to it. Uh, in terms of uh, group sizes and stuff, they are a social animal just like your other Placos and they do enjoy being in a group. But in terms of group dynamics, I would recommend having at least two males and about five to six females for this particular species, especially if the tank is not big enough. If my tank is a 40 gallon footprint and uh, there's two dominant males, there was four males and the, the first dominant male ended up killing the two other males within the first 24 hours of them being in the tank. Once that happened, the other second male ended up picking to this side and he's on this cave. The first dominant male is on the cave over here and uh, they never seem to pass the midsection and they seem to hold their own area. So each fish requires about a square foot or a little bit larger than that of a territory. I would say about a square foot and a half to two square feet per fish is ideal per male. Now for the females, they don't seem to mind that uh, as long as you have enough caves for them. But these guys do require larger caves. Uh, what I'm using is the, ex uh, the large caves from angelfence.ca. So these are D-shaped Euro caves. They are eight inches long and they are three inches tall and two and a half inches wide and uh, they do fit into them quite snugly. And I do have some smaller caves for them so that they do have some choice and variety and a couple of watering spikes that used to be in here. Be I moved them out because the males were too big for the watering spikes and I didn't want them to trap any females and kill them just by me trying to get any spawn. So these are the type of things you wanna pay attention to. And uh, I'm gonna be making a spawning video for them. So subscribe down below and hit that notification icon so you get updated when that video as well as many other videos like that get uploaded. The channel's growing really fast, guys. Thank you so much for all your support. If you have anything you want to know about these guys as well as any other fish I'm keeping, comment below and let me know. I will be making a lot more videos on uh, some of the other rare fish that I have, especially the Corridoras, which haven't been getting any love until this point. I have been saving them. I have quite a bit of rare Corridoras, so I'll be making videos about them. So subscribe down below and hit that notification icon so you get up there when those videos as well as many other videos like that get uploaded. As always, thank you so much for your support. 
And uh, I love you all. I'll see you on the next video. God bless you all.